Hello, my name is Michael Lanasa, and I'm a technical writer for Forefront Online Protection for Exchange. This is my second installment in my video series on the Administration Center. Let's move to the Domain sub-tab. Here is where you would see all your different domains. In this scenario, we only have one domain that has yet to be validated and enabled. You can add a domain using the Task section. When creating a new domain, you can use the service settings from an existing domain by choosing to use it as a template. After you add a domain, you should wait at least 30 minutes before updating your DNS information. This gives time for your new domains to be replicated to the hosted filtering network. I'll click the TreyResearch.com domain, which brings us to the Domain Settings page. Under Preferences, I can set Catch All Domains, which lets you filter a domain and all its subdomains without having to add each subdomain in the Administration Center. You can also change your outbound mail preferences here. You can choose to filter all outbound mail and also automatically BCC any suspicious outgoing mail to a specific address. Under Edit Domain Services, I can enable and disable spam and policy filtering. You can also create a virtual domain, which allows you to configure different filtering or routing options for a subset of users. I'll scroll down and we can see the notification section. The Forefront Online Protection for Exchange Filtering Service can send automatic spam and virus notifications and message deferral alerts to end users and administrators when an event has occurred that affects their service. Under IP Address Settings, I must specify the mail server IP address that my inbound email messages can be delivered to after they have been filtered. If you have multiple mail server addresses, you can configure them as multiple SMTP profiles on the Company tab which I have already shown you. Then this pop-up box will change to allow a drop-down option. Under Outbound IP Addresses, we can add the IP addresses of the outbound mail servers that are configured to use the FOPI service. It is not necessary to configure this on a domain level if you have already configured it on a company level. Now let's review the Service Settings section. Under User List Settings, we can select how we add user accounts to our hosted services. While it's not required, we recommend that you use the Directory Synchronization Tool, which is an on-premise application that communicates with your company's on-site Active Directory domain services and Microsoft Exchange server to build a user email address list. You can configure your filtering service to validate messages that come into the domain before they undergo further processing by using directory-based edge blocking. Under Spam Action, you can select the action for emails identified as spam. Additional spam filtering options allows you to select attributes which will increase the likelihood that a message will be quarantined as spam. You can also test this setting under Spam Test Mode Options. In Test Mode, the messages that are identified as spam are tagged or modified, but still delivered to the end recipient. Finally, under Policy Filter Settings, you can add a footer to all outbound email. For example, you could use this option to add company information or a legal disclaimer to all outgoing mail. Under the Task section, we can perform common tasks such as managing users and policies or enabling and validating a domain. We have already discussed IP restriction, but notice that we can configure the setting here on a domain level. Now let's talk about the Quarantine section. Spam Quarantine is the most widely used option for storing spam because it relieves your organization's email servers from processing and storing this type of email. There are two functions to the Spam Quarantine. First, messages marked as spam are quarantined and stored off-site and do not enter your organization's network. Second, users can view spam sent to them using a web-based interface. Spam is stored in the quarantine for 15 days and then it is deleted. During this time, users can view the messages, move them to the inbox, and report false positives. Okay, in my next video, we'll continue the tour of the Administration Center, starting at the Users tab.